Hello and welcome to my tutorial on Umbral Space Industries and Extraplanetary Launch Pads. Today we're going to cover some slides that will help explain how it works and if you look in the description down below the video you should find a link to the very slides we're going to be covering today so that you can refer to them when you need to look at them later. Hopefully we can cover this fairly quickly and you can just go back and review it once you've taken a look at the slides. So. I have spent many a stream, and I'm not just going to read everything off the slides, building things in KSP that are colonies, basically. And I like to build things using extraplanetary launch pads. And so, since there's been a major update to Umbra Space Industries so that it now uses material kits and specialized parts, people have asked me, well, how does that work now? So, we're going to try to cover some of that. As a reference, in the future we'll be covering things such as how to set up a basic starter colony, how to build things using the hammer and stake approach off-world using extraplanetary launch pads, how to find good sources of materials to make your base work, and how to optimize your base once you get to the mid and late game. But enough of that for now, let's get into the meat of this, shall we? So first of all, you're going to need some mods. The mods discussed here are as follows. We're using the USI, which is Umber Space Industries, a series of mods created by RoverDude. And here you can see the link for that off of GitHub. We're using extraplanetary launch pads, um, and you can see a link for that there. And we're going to be using uh, by Tan Tanawa, and we're going to be using Kerbal Inventory System and Attachment System in some of our later videos, and you'll want to use that for applying stakes and such, but at the moment we're not going to worry too much about that, but that will be important in later uh, tutorial videos, so you'll want that at some point as well. So those are the mods that are really core to what we're going to be doing here, and the supporting mods such as the community resource pack and things like that, but uh, not spending too much time covering the actual mods, but more how to use the mods. Let's move on. So the first thing you're going to need to know is how to get the raw materials you're going to need in order to make this work. Now there are several ways to get the raw materials, but the most important ones are just simply drilling them. Now there are several drills that come stock with uh, UKS, and there are basically two types of drills. There are drills that get you dirt, and there are drills that get you specific materials. The MEU series of drills are for specific types of materials, and the strip miner drills are for dirt. Now, the MEU-250 drill gets you gypsum, dirt, and hydrates. This is one of the other ways you can get dirt. You can get metallic ore substrate in uranium, or uranite, um, from the MEU-500 drill, and the MEU-750 drill gets you minerals and water. Now, if your concentration is above 5%, you can get rare metals and exotic minerals from those drills as well as appropriate here. You can see that here. That's why they're marked in red. If the concentration level is below 5% where this drill is located, you cannot mine that material. So when we get to how to find high concentrations of materials in a future tutorial, that's going to be important. And of course, these give you dirt. Now for dirt, which is a relatively new special material, this can be processed into basically all of the other USI materials. Now there are two ways to process it. There's the Mark V Regolith Sifter, which is a small little attach-on side module. And there's the UKS Industrial Regolith Sifter, which is a really large part. Now that part's big enough that it's going to be hard to get on planet for most of you. Um, but it's sort of a mid to late stage colony piece that can be very handy. But most of you are going to start with the Mark V because it's a, a very early colony piece. Any material that exists on that planet can be gained through sifting dirt if you're using the UKS Industrial Regolith Sifter. If you're using the Mark V Regolith Sifter, any material that is at a concentration of 2.5 or higher as a planetary average can be gained from the Regolith Sifter for if it's a Mark V. So if you've got a material that's at 2.4 concentration across the entire planet, tough. You're not going to be able to get it. So for example, say rare metals is at 1.7 as an average for the planet. You're going to have to use the UKS Industrial Regular Sifter. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that material from dirt. A couple things to note about dirt. If you try to lift off of a planet with dirt, the dirt goes away. It's jettisoned automatically. 
Part of that's because the dirt is based off of the planet that it's being mined from. So if like you could mine dirt on Duna and bring it back to Minmus, the systems would take a look at it as if it was uh, part of the dirt from Minmus because it looks at the sphere of influence that the sifter is on. So so that's why it's that's part of why it's that way. Now in early game this can be really useful because if you put down a base colony and you find, for example, that there's no water at the site you landed, you can still get water if the planetary average or moon average is above 2.5% by processing dirt. So you can see that even if there's not a material at your exact location, as long as there's dirt at your exact location, you can then mine it. Now remember, dirt has a percentage. There are places where there will not be dirt, and we'll cover this when we're talking about how to get materials, but be aware that dirt is just like any other material where there's a chance it's there or not there, and there's a uh, percentage of how much dirt is there. So if you've got a very high percentage of dirt concentration, you're going to be able to get a lot more dirt a lot faster. Just something to keep in mind. So once you've got your raw materials, the three raw materials that we're going to be most concerned with today is metallic ore, minerals, and substrate. And the reason we're concerned with those is because those turn into metals, chemicals, and polymers, which is what we're going to need for our later stages. Now, the smeltomatic, the Mark V smeltomatic, is again a little side piece that you can attach for early colonization purposes and the UKS mobile refinery which is a much larger piece again the same size as the industrial uh, regular sifter is going to be your really what you're going to try to use when you finally are starting to get your colony really established and the reason for that is that the smeltomatic and the refinery both convert materials but the smeltomatic takes 10 times as much materials so for example Right now, there's a, a one-tenth loss. So for every 10 metallic ore, you get one metal, right, if you're using the mobile refinery. But if you're using the smeltomatic, for every 100 metallic ore, you get one metal. So something to keep in mind there. And uh, these both require electricity and machinery. But the important thing to note is that this is how you make your metals, chemicals, and polymers, and that the UKS mobile refinery requires that you have to have a sifter or smelter, one of the Mark Vs, on the base in order for it to work. So even though you may not be using the sifter or the smelter, one of the Mark V ones, in, uh, by the time you get that down there, you're still going to need it in order to make it operate. So you've got your materials. Now what do you do? Well, if you get an inflatable workshop down there, you can turn metals, chemicals, polymers, and machinery and electricity into material kits. And that is a fairly easy piece to get down. So material kits are going to be fairly easy in the early game as long as you've got access to the metals, chemicals, and polymers. And everything needs machinery, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you want to make specialized parts, you're going to need the UKS fabrication module, again, one of the Mark III parts, a much larger part. It requires rare metals, exotic minerals, machinery, and electricity. Now remember, there was no processing for these materials. These have to be mined, and they have to be at a concentration higher than 5% to be mined, or you can get it from dirt as long as the planetary concentration is above 2.5% if you're using the Mark V, or if you're using the industrial regular sifter, it doesn't matter as long as it exists on the planet, but you're not going to get a lot of it, unless you're processing a lot of dirt. So something to keep in mind. Now, in order to make things, you're going to need machinery as well, and we've talked about that, in order to make parts. And in order to make machinery, you're going to need the Mark V inflatable workshop, and you're going to need metals, chemicals, polymers, and specialized parts. Now you may say, well, why do I need specialized parts? Well, you can ship up machinery, and machinery is used at a really slow speed. Um, usually, you know, so slow that it doesn't really register until you're really time warping a lot. But you need to understand that the level of machinery affects the efficiency of the module, meaning that if the module can hold a thousand machinery and I only have 200 in there, it's going to be much less efficient than if I have a thousand machinery in there. So you need to top off the machinery if you can at all. So something to be aware of as you move forward and be aware that it is used up at low levels by almost every process we're looking at. 
The other thing is that almost every stage of the process makes recyclables. Not at a fast rate, but it does make recyclables. So if you have a UKS fabrication module, remember this is the large part that makes the specialized uh, parts, it can process recyclables back into metals, chemicals, polymers, and look, specialized parts. This is important because this is one of the ways you can get specialized parts to make machinery. And it actually, the recyclables, actually makes recyclables. I know that seems a little bit weird. It actually makes much less recyclables than it takes in, so it's not a recursive infinitive loop, but it does actually give you some recyclables back every time you make recyclables. Not a lot. But the specialized parts thing is here the part that you really probably want to pay attention to the most. So let's cover just sort of the basics here of what makes what. The industrial regolith sifter and the Mark V regolith sifter can make all raw materials, but remember, if you want to make uh, uh, raw materials out of dirt and the industrial, uh, the planetary average is less than 2.5%, you'll need the industrial regolith sifter. If it's above 2.5%, you can get away with the Mark V, but that makes all raw materials, including, by the way, stock ore, so be aware of that. Um, the UKS Mobile Refinery and the Smeltomatic are what makes metals, metals, chemicals, and polymers. The Smeltomatic is 100 to 1, and the re Mobile Refinery is 10 to 1. Important to know that. Um, remember, for rare metals and exotic minerals, you can either process it from dirt or mine it directly. There is no processing required, and it is no longer a byproduct of metal processing or chemical processing. It once upon a time, many moons ago, was... It no longer is and hasn't been for some time, so be aware of that if you're used to an old version of USI. The Mark V inflatable workshop is used to make material kits and machinery, and the UKS fabrication module is used to make specialized parts and has the recycle functions, but it requires the Mark V workshop to work. So that covers sort of the basics there. This slide may be your most useful overview slide. This slide plus the one that was right before it. Um, Actually, all the way back here. This slide may be your most important slides because this shows you exactly what you need and what makes them. And then as we go down, this kind of gives you an overview. Now, how do you make a thing? Well, a thing requires material kits plus specialized parts to make a new thing. Now, we'll cover actually how to build things, but it's important to note that you have to have a launch pad. There are a couple of ways to have a launch pad. You can either use KIS slash KAS to put down stakes with a hammer on a moon or a planet, and then as long as you've got an EPL survey mechanism, and we'll talk about that more when we do that part of a tutorial, you can actually stake out an area, or you can use the UKS mobile launch platform or the OKS shipyard. Both of those are very handy as well. In order to determine how much stuff you need, you need to know the total weight and dry mass. Now, if you have EPL installed, there is an EPL button that you can use in uh, Blizzy's toolbar, and if you click on that in the VAB or the space plane hanger, it will tell you exactly how much of this you need. Be aware that even though we're using material kits and specialized parts because of the um, recipe formulas that are embedded in EPL now, uh, it will show you the proper amount of material kits and specialized parts. The other thing to note is that uh, material kits are one for one, one kilogram equals uh, one material kit, and uh, that's not true for specialized parts. And that the amount of specialized parts to uh, material kits you need is uh, 8 to 2, meaning that if you needed 1,000 kilograms of dry material, you would need 800 kilograms of material kits and 200 kilograms of specialized parts. And since a specialized part roughly weighs 3.8 kilograms, that gives you kind of an idea of what you're looking at there. Be aware these resources are displayed in the VAB in the space plane hanger if you pull up your EPL tab for convenience sake. This is the dry weight, and we're going to cover here what you don't get. When you build something using EPL, be aware that you do not get the part full. That means that it doesn't have any fuel, it doesn't have any electrical current, it doesn't have anything. There are a couple of exceptions to this, and uh, the first exception is when we're talking about um, KIS parts. If you put a KIS item inside it, um, like a hammer or a wrench or something like that in storage, it will actually add to the weight of the object and be built with the object. 
This can be very handy if you go, oh, I forgot a hammer, a couple drills or something like that, or I need some connectors. You can build a box with those connectors in it using EPL. Great. It will not build machinery. It will not build life support supplies, electrical charge, fuel, or any of that. Remember that since these parts require machinery to operate, that either you need a way to build machinery already or you need to ship machinery up there to make these parts work. And also, if you're building something like a uh, rover or something like that that's planning on being unmanned, even if you have battery power and solar panels, unless the solar panels are already extended or solar panels that don't need to be extended and, and you're in the sun, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to extend the solar panels because you're not going to have control, because you're not going to have electrical charge, because it's created without electrical charge. One of the ways I've found around this is to slap an RTG on the side of it when you're making it. Often I'll slap an RTG, take control, make sure that it's going, and then actually scrap the RTG off, but we'll talk about scrapping in another stream. So that's the core of it. Those are the things you need to know about how to build, the sort of flow charts to get you where you're going, and that's the end. Um, I am the Red Panda. It is pronounced red, as in a well-read panda, or I read the book last night. It's a homophone. That's when two words sound alike but are spelled different and have different meanings. Um, you can find me on twitch.tv at the Red Panda. I am also uh, have a website, theredpanda.com, and I'm also on YouTube, uh, the Red Panda, here. If you're watching this video, you probably see me here. And I'm also on Twitter as the Red Panda. So I hope you stay tuned and tune on in. We're going to be doing future tutorials uh, covering additional elements, such as how to build uh, EPL objects using USI off-planet, specifically once we have the material kits and specialized parts. And we'll also be covering things like how to find hotspots for specific resources and how to start with a base colony and build it up into a medium colony and then how to build a medium colony up into an efficient high-end colony. So hopefully these will all be useful tutorials in the future. I hope you enjoyed this one. Remember you can find the slides on my website at theredpanda.com and uh, go to the games tab and under the games tab there should be a USI-EPL uh, tab there and you can find the slides there and also there'll be some links down below in the description. I hope this has been very helpful. I am the Red Panda and remember, fly safe everyone!